Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I'm gonna be unboxing some of our fresh in tea wear, including unveiling our latest Gen Shui clay treasures. I brought all of these goodies back from the warehouse and we are gonna be trying as best we can to launch these tea wares as soon as possible. We're right at the tail end of Black Friday. In fact, we've been selling some of these tea wares on pre-sale knowing that it was about to arrive, but we've obviously got to check all of the handmade pots, check them thoroughly before we send them out. So we're gonna to try to get them online as quickly as possible for you. So where do we begin? Right, well, let's start, I guess, just with um, some tea ware which has just come back into stock. So this is our Zhang Shuiping Chaozhou clay pot. I'm not going to open it because this is something that we are going to sell. We only have about 10 of these in stock. So you've got to move quickly if you wanted this sweeping. And we've also got a beautiful, cute, super cute Chaozhou shisha shape, a lovely little chubby shisha shape. Beautiful, lovely size, very good for solo brewing and for two people. Again, I'm not gonna open that, but I thought I'll just show that to you. Right, moving on to our commissioned teaware. So the teaware which was commissioned especially, I'll leave this here, especially for us, where do I start? Let's start with our new guy one. So every so often we release a 100 mil guy one with one of our unique designs. Once those designs are gone, they're gone. We don't reproduce them. So they are collectibles. So you can see Mayleaf on the saucer, a beautiful, simple, but classic. Can't go wrong. It's the, it's the little black dress of, tea of Gong Fu Brewing or the lightsaber of Gong Fu Brewing. Everyone needs one in their home. 100 mil white guy one, a great size for, you know, from one to four people. But also, you know, whenever we give our um, brewing uh, recommendations, we tell you how much grams per 100 mil. And so it's super easy. It's just, that's this guy one size. So this one here is our Gong Fu Forever. Gong Fu Forever, hashtag Gong Fu Forever. And an infinity symbol made up of tea leaves. So that's our latest, uh, 100 mil guy one design, Gong Fu Forever with the infinity symbol. I think all of our other guy ones are either sold out or they're very close to being sold out. The other, uh, I think tea lifted, we've still got a few tea lifted guy ones in stock. So I'm gonna be, no doubt you'll see me brewing a lot in this guy one in future videos. I'll put that to the side. Right, we also have new tea pets. Let's put them here. We've got an elephant and a cat, an elephant and a cat. To join our frog teapot, which we released last year as part of our Gong Fu code and Gong Fu satellite. These are color changing pets. We love them. I mean, I, I've always wanted a cat and an elephant as my teapot. You may have seen that I've got a, an other elephants that we've, um, we've picked up on our travels, but we wanted our own custom made elephant that is the perfect size for a Gong Fu session and for our uh, infusion counters here. So if you've got a Gong Fu code or Gong Fu satellite, then you can use these pegs to um, fit into your code or satellite so that you can use the pet to count infusions. But don't worry if you don't have one of those because now we've made these pegs removable so you can unscrew the peg and it will quite happily sit onto any surface. That's something that we really wanted to do as an improvement on the uh, frog, which was designed really to only be part of the code and satellite set. So now you can put the peg in if you're using an infusion counter, or you can take it out if you're using it just on a flat surface. Oh, let's show the color changing here. So we'll do one at a time. So let's do elephant first. So elephant, goes from black to, are you ready? From black to gold, whoa. There you go. So that's the elephant, you can see it changes gold. And the cat here, the cat, it's a black and white cat. So it starts off black and then goes white. Look at that, it's really dramatic <laughs> color change. So when you offer tea or hot water, to the cat 
and it's um, you know begging for tea there you can see it's it's asking for tea when you offer it then it will turn white and you can see as it cools down it starts to get that black and white cat effect and with the elephant you get that gold and black effect so again you're going to see me using these more and more we're so happy that they're finally here this boat was four weeks delayed so that means it took nearly uh, two months for the boat to arrive. So it was meant to arrive well before November, or right at the beginning of November, the worst case scenario, but due to all sorts of things, COVID and uh, Christmas rush and Brexit, um, the boat was just sitting out on the ocean, just waiting for, for a few weeks, for four weeks um, before it could be uh, called in. It was like a one in, one out situation at the port. Really, really frustrating. We wanted to get all of these products out well before Christmas, but anyway that's where we're at and next up we have our gong fu stems so these are a custom made custom designed handmade bamboo tea tools and we thought long and hard about which tools we wanted because in gong fu brewing you can get lots of different tools and there's lots of little picks and and all sorts of things and we and we wanted to simplify it we wanted to simplify it to the absolute essentials that we felt you needed because we don't want to overly clutter um, your session so here we go this is what we designed what we came up with um, so on the one hand you've got tweezers and these tweezers are straight tweezers with um, this grooved um, edge, really good for grip. We tested out lots of uh, tweezers and we felt, well, you're getting a sneak peek of this Gen Shui cup here. We felt that this was the best in terms of the grip. So very, very good for grip. So useful for pouring out rinses, um, for cleaning cups. If you wanted to, you could clean cups like the Chinese do. Um, just a really useful way to, you know, move things around and pour out rinse or the the last bits of tea so a great way to move teaware around without touching it we've also got this which we're calling a cup collar and a cup collar is great for serving tea so you can just take it and you can serve right so it's a very very convenient way to pick up cups and it works with most cups i mean we designed this shape to fit most cups uh you know there will be a few that don't work but for the majority of gong fu size cups this works and it may feel like oh that seems a bit precarious but honestly when you have it in your hand you really feel like you can move it quite vigorously and you know it's not going to fall obviously i don't recommend you start shaking it around but to move tea around it's a great way to uh, to serve tea if you wanted to be a little bit more formal a little bit classier you could pour your teas and then serve them onto saucers or directly in front of the uh, guests so that's a great uh, little thing the cup collar and on the other side we've made this here which is our we're calling it a tea stylus you can call it a tea scoop but a stylus seemed more appropriate for us because it's something to sort of prod at the leaves move the leaves around so when you have a scoop of leaves like this you can easily just sort of scoop the leaves move the leaves you can also sort of move the leaves around in the pot if you wanted oh i should say also this tweezer is very useful if you wanted to take out leaves from the pot but you didn't want to fish in with your fingers or the guy one you could take out leaves to examine the wet leaves so these are our gong fu stems again you're going to see me using these a lot especially for maybe more dry sessions, which we're going to be uh, showing you next year. So, Gong Fu Stems, great, great uh, bamboo tools. Took us a long time to get the designs right, but we're finally happy with them and they are here. Right, now let's move on to the main event. Not that those are not beautiful bits of kit for your tea sessions, but we really wanted to bring back some Gen Shui teaware. It took us a while, 
mainly because we wanted to get the designs right. And uh, then, of course, it took them a while to make them. They're all fully handmade Gen Shui pots. I've done a whole video about Gen Shui pots and uh, us visiting Gen Shui. Go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can see the potters who actually made this teaware. And we've done many videos about which clay type is best for which teas. Again, I'll put links in the description below. But the shortcut is Gen Shui is a great all-star um, clay. It suits cooked poor, ripe poor really, really well, but is suited to many, many different tea types um, and is more sort of um, open in terms of being used as an all-star pot. Okay, let's start with the pot, shall we? I've not tried this pot yet. I have literally just taken it from the delivery from the warehouse and here it is. So this is our Gen Shui pot. A few things to note. First of all, the shape, we've gone for a more flat, wide based shape, which I think is a really, really lovely, stable looking shape. And, and also just it suits all, site, all types of tea. Um, we've got uh, the color of it is being left un uh, sanded down so our previous um, Gen Shui was sort of sanded down so you had this sort of mottled brown and darker black effect here we've gone very very classy with a full black effect so this is how it is after just some initial polishing um, but not sanding down into the clay again if you don't know what I'm talking about go check out the video um, when we're in Gen Shui and you'll see that in action um, the symbol on here and the symbols on all of these come from Liu Xu Tong script so this is ancient script characters from about around 800 years ago so really really ancient very very different from modern Chinese script or modern Chinese characters and this symbol here is the character for Hui. Hui means returning, returning back to the original place. I've done a whole video about Hui Gun and what Hui Gun means because you hear that term a lot um, in the world of tea, which means returning sweetness. And Hui is this sense of returning back to the original place. And we felt that that was really, really fitting for the pot because you put the dry leaves in, you hit it with water and the leaves sort of return back to their original state. They return back to their original place of being fresh leaves or being hydrated leaves. So we felt that Hui on the pot really, really worked. Then on the cup, you have Gan. So again, the cup is this sort of egg-shaped cup, the same style, the same color in terms of this darker color. So really, really nice, pops really well with that yellow color, the gold color here. And that is the symbol for gun, which is this uh, symbol of the tongue and a place where there is sweetness. So sweetness, but the sweetness is not just taste. It also can be referred to in a sort of symbolic way. So the sweetness of rainfall that is really, really needed or the sweetness of returning back to your family so the sweetness that comes not just from the sense of taste but also of from the whole atmosphere and the environment so we felt that that worked really really well with the cup so you've got hui and gun hui gun right and then of course well we say of course we've never done this before but we wanted the full set so we have had a gen shui Gong Dao Bay made for us. You can see the Gong Dao Bay here. Suits really well the pot and the cup. Again, the same color, of course, but also the shapes, I think, work very well together. And this, I've not tried it yet, so I'm a bit nervous. Hopefully the pour is as good as I, as I hope. Uh, you know, I trust these, uh, these Gen Shui tea makers. Really lovely tactile design. And the symbol on here is Yun. And Yun um, means even or equal and can be sort of applied to sharing. So obviously the whole point of the Gong Dao Bay is that you're evening out the brew. You're pouring from the pot directly, uh, not directly to the cups, I should say, but into a pitcher which evens out the brew so that slightly weaker first um, pour parts of the pour mix up with the more concentrated uh, parts of the latter part of the pour and then you get an evening out of the uh, liquor so that everybody who drinks taste the same tea. So an even tasting equal also can be applied to sharing. So Yun, we felt, works really well with the Gong Dao Bei. So there you go. You've got Hui, 
returning back to the original place, yun, which is sharing, equal, even, and then you've got gun, which is sweetness, not just in terms of taste, but also in terms of a sensation. Right, now let's give them their inaugural brew. Exciting times. I'm obviously, you know, a bit nervous here because I want to make sure that the pores are all okay. So I want to check them, I'm going to do this check, make sure everything's working as expected. Again, I trust the, the potters, but you know, we've always got to check. And then we're going to be going through all of them because they're handmade, we just want to make sure all of them don't have any sort of unsightly blemishes. Um, and the, the Gen Shui aesthetic is very different from, for example, Chaozhou clay in terms of the aesthetic. And I think that both clay types have their own artistic and aesthetic merits. Chaozhou clay um, is, can be worked much finer, so you can get much more intricate sort of crafted detail in the pots. Whereas Gen Shui clay has a sort of expensive weightiness about it. It has, a, it has more of a substantial quality to it. It has a sort of smoother, more sort of tactile ergonomic quality and is very, very functional. And as I said, very, very good for all tea types, probably except sort of green um, and light oolongs. It can be used as an all-star pot. Right, this is getting Nice and hot, right. Now what I'm looking for here is a pour which is fast and smooth. Here we go. And drip free, hopefully. Yeah, very, very, very smooth. And very, very fast. You could see how quickly that emptied out. So that speed of pouring means that you're, you're gonna have very accurate brew times with a more crafted, finer uh, pots like the Chaozhou uh, pots, they tend to have uh, much narrower spouts and so you're getting a, a longer time for the, the pot to uh, empty. And therefore you've got to be a little bit more um, careful about your brewing because you don't want to pour too late because there'll be much more residual time where the leaf is brewing in the pot. Whereas with Chaozhou, it's almost like a Gaiwan. In fact, it pretty much is the same. You can pour off very, very quickly so you can get very very accurate brewing times. That's one of the real uh, key benefits I think of Gen Shui clay over uh, Chaozhou, Yixing and Nixing clay. Gen Shui tends to have the fastest pour. So very very warm. Now we need to see whether or not the Gongdao Bay has got a nice smooth drip free as much as possible pour. Here we go. Very smooth. Oh yes. So you've always got um, this sort of balance that you need to play with when you are designing Gongdao Bays. You want the spout to be long enough that it will uh, be as drip free as possible. Um, so the longer it is and the more, the more sort of uh, elongated it is, you get very, very smooth and drip free pores, but then it can look a bit ugly if it's too long. And this works very, very well, as you can see. I, I had all confidence in the Gen Shui uh, producers, the clay producers, uh, because uh, I know how much they love their work. Right, so I'm gonna be drinking some baked goods, simply because I was at the warehouse and I saw it and I thought, oh, I haven't had baked goods for a while, it's not in my home. Um, and uh, it's just a great way, baked goods, to get um, a, a really high quality roasted oolong without spending the sort of prices of a Taiwanese roast, high roasted oolong or Yencha roasted oolongs. Um, this is an amazing price point for an immaculate tea. In fact, we did a video uh, where we, I think we did a blind taste, but at least we did a taste test between uh, this uh, tea and a very much more expensive um, Taiwanese, I think it was a frozen summit, um, but don't quote me on that, uh, roast oolong, and both George and I picked this out as our favorite. Right, I brought out the Gongfu stems here. Let me just pour the rest of this water away. So we've got the Gongfu stems here, so let's bring these out to play. And I can use this tea stylus here to scoop these leaves into the pot. Another great thing about this design 
is I love pots with wide openings because when you have wide openings, okay, there was one straggler, but most of the time you're not gonna make a mess when you're putting a uh, leaf in, especially if the leaf is not ball rolled, but is larger leaf as well. This is, uh, I'm a big fan of large openings. Obviously it's gonna affect the aesthetic, so you've got to sort of bear that in mind, but I really, really do love um, pots with large openings. Right, let's have a sniff. Oh, it has been a while and I have missed baked goods. It's just got a very all around complex aroma with lots of um, dark baked biscuits and um, there's some cherry fruit in fact a lot of cherry fruit so you get this combination of sort of um, dark baked vanilla cookies a bit of like rum a bit of um, yeah like vanilla rums cookies and then just cherries, um, slight sort of Alfonso mango as well, a little going into tropical fruit. I'm not going to do a full tasting of this, but I am very happy that I selected this one. So let's give it a rinse. Let's see how the Gen Shui performs. Good, very fast pour. Okay, let's have a smell. Oh, let's choose a pet. What are we going for? Should we go for elephant? So I made these pets um, perfect size to fit the Gong Fu uh, code. So you could spin the pet around against that very sort of anal level of detail that we focused on is like, we, it's literally to the millimeter or even to the half millimeter. We got the, the producers to keep molding, molding, changing it until we got the right uh, size exactly for us. Okay, let's uh, give Elephant a dousing here. There you go. Right. Let's have a smell of those wet leaves. Mmm, a little bit of um, tobacco, mangosteen. Again, the vanilla's coming through. A little cask note happening, um, but very, very light. The roast is very, very well done. It's very deep and set into the tea rather than this sort of waft of heavy roast smell. I mean, it is an intense smell, but it, it tastes very well, it smells very well integrated with all of the fruits and the creams, which is what we look for in a good roast. Okay. The first brew in my, because I've got to obviously have one, my <laughs> Chen Shui clay pot. It took a while for the uh, potters to make these. We've got uh, 59, so 60, but I've got one, so 59 of the Gong Dao Bay and the pots, and we've got about just over a hundred cups. It took the best part of about four months for them to do. Obviously they were doing other works as well, but yeah. Um, and um, let me pour this off quickly. Um, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about how this uh, seal or this script is placed onto the Gentry pot, just in case you haven't seen that video, you're not gonna see that video. This here is not paint. What they do is they draw the uh, symbol, then they cut it out of the uh, Gen Shui clay, and then they fill it with colored clay. And then they will bake it like that and sand it back down. So this has a sort of slightly textured feel to it. And that is not paint. So it's not painted on, and that means it's going to stay there forever. You know, it's not something that can get rubbed off. It's the same with all of these, the cup and the uh, Gong Dao Bei. All of these uh, designs are cut in and inlaid as colored clay inlaid into the pot. Um, so it's very, very um, resilient and you're gonna get this beautiful uh, gold. It's not gonna lose any of its vibrancy over time. Cheers, everybody. Oh. So thick, so smooth. The Gen Shui is definitely doing its work and the taste is super fruity. Wow, lots of mangosteen, lots of cherry. Almost reminds me, or does remind me a lot actually, of 
Chilan Summer Haze, which is a, a, a delightful, bright, fruity, tropical fruit. Yencha, this is a lot more affordable than Summer Haze. Um, very similar um, flavor profile. Mangosteens, cherries, vanillas. An amazing, amazing tea. Super happy that we continued our tradition of making this baked goods, this roasted Huangdan. We first started it when we shot our first video about Tie Guan Yin on location. Go check out that video and you can see us sourcing our first ever baked goods. This is a, a few generations down and it's only getting better. Mm. Very, very balanced, very, very um, uh, complex combination of baked dark biscuits and tropical fruits like mangosteen and some cherry note and a little bit of cask in there as well. Should take this off. You can see ample room for a lot of ball rolled oolong to expand. I should have shown you that the filter here is one of those ball filters which are great at uh, stopping um, any leaves from going through, but also allowing for a fast pour. Let's do one more infusion of this. Ah, the smoothness, the silkiness. Obviously I should really A, B it with, with porcelain, but you definitely get a sense that the Gen Shui is having a very powerful effect on this tea really giving it a nice, soft, thick mouthfeel. Oh, I was going to pour into the cup. Here we go. Yeah, really fast. Look, you empty the pot in a few seconds. Uh, Chow Zhou clay and some uh, Yixing and Nixing can take 10, 15 seconds. And so you've got to factor that in when you are calculating when to pour off your tea. I'm liking this, uh, this dark, almost black color as well. Something that um, we've missed in our collection a little bit. I think it just has a very sleek look to it. Especially with something very simple and um, striking like a gold, you know, one color gold symbol. Mm. So thick and syrupy and juicy with that fruity taste just because I want to and these are new in stock and I have not really played with them much. Let's give them a double dousing. Black and white cat, black and gold elephant. Very, very happy with that. Right, so there you go. Some of the fresh in teaware are Gen Shui clay pot. Gongdao Bay and Cup is available, plus the Gongfu stems, of course, so you can easily pick and serve people very, very easily with the little stylus and the tweezer for you to pick up cups and pick out little bits of leaf you can see and just sort of, you can then do things in a little bit more of an elegant and uh, classy way compared to sticking your fingers in, which you are very used to seeing me doing. There you go. I hope that there's something here to take your fancy. And uh, please let us know if you, if you think that there's any teaware that you would really like us to start to source or try to design. We're always interested to hear your feedback. So let us know what you think of these designs and any other teaware that you would like us to produce. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.